Sophia in Bristol. Sophia, good evening. Hi there, Daniel. Um, can you hear me okay? I can. Hi. Perfect. Um, so I was. my question is regarding employment law. I was diagnosed with cancer last year. Um, and since then, I've put on a PIP, a performance improvement plan, since my diagnosis. My employer, they've been monitoring me quite closely and said to me that if I don't meet certain expectations of the role, that they will, as a possibility that I could lose my job. Um, since then, I've been going in and out of hospital. And then I was signed off by my oncologist in May to focus on treatment. I came back um, literally like a week or so ago. And then the employer approached me and said to me, um, we have a proposal for you, which is essentially a a settlement agreement. And they said to me, either I can take this agreement or sign this contract and they'd give me some money to leave, or um, I can continue to be put through this PIP um, performance improvement plan for the next few months. Um, And then that would result in possibility of me losing my job or being, you know, dismissed because I'm not meeting the demands of the role. So um, I just wanted to know what my options are and what is it that I can do? What's the best solution at the moment? Sophia, thank you for calling in. I'm going to give you a legal answer and a practical answer here. Okay. Uh, Let's start with the legal answer because that's really why you've called. Anybody who has cancer or is undergoing treatment for cancer is deemed to be disabled under the Equality Act, which means that an employer isn't entitled to just follow their normal performance improvement plan uh, thresholds, Mm, but uh, has to adjust them, has to make reasonable adjustments to them. Now, just help me with this, Sophia. Is your improvement plan because you're absent or is it because when you're at work, you're not doing a good enough job, according to your employer? Um, I don't think it's to do with absence. They're saying that I'm I'm just not meeting the demand. What, what is the job? The, do you mind me asking? Um, what do you do? It's um, so I work in it's I'd, I work in marketing, but I'd rather not say exactly what I work okay. in marketing. Do you work for a large yeah. company or a small company? Uh, I'd say it's medium sized. What do you, give me some numbers? What do you mean by that? How many? Uh, around 500, 500 or so. Okay, uh, so they're big enough to accommodate somebody who needs some extra accommodation did Mm. the performance issues start before you were diagnosed with cancer no everything started after so once i told them that's when they put me through all these things do you think do you agree that you have been underperforming or do you think they're targeting you to try to exit you from the company because you have cancer um i do feel obviously it's affected me because i've had to do you know deal with a lot of things um yeah so i do feel that i has there has been a dip yes but, you know, I can't, I've done as, as much as I can, but, um, yeah, it has affected me. Um, definitely, so, so I do feel that. But it's because of my diagnosis, not because of my capabilities. It's literally because of what I have. Yeah. So so if I can sum that up, Sophia, uh, you, you accept your performance has gone down, but the reason your performance has gone down is because of your diagnosis and because of your illness. It, Exactly, yeah. because of the illness. Right. So uh, you probably do have a claim here if they exit you. I just have one other question, and I'm, I'm really sorry to ask this, Sophia. Um, okay. And if you don't want to answer it, don't. Is your diagnosis a good one? Well, it depends what you, what you class as good. I mean, it's a gynecological... Uh, gy- uh, it's a gyneco- uh, gynecological cancer, so... Right, I so... Mean, I don't, I so... Don't, I don't. Uh, there's, there's no way to ask this question without sounding insensitive, and I'm really sorry to do so. Yeah. Um, is it likely that in the short to medium term you're going to be returning to work and, and able to work at a normal level again? Um, well, I would have to do surgery, which I don't want to do because it's essentially endometrial cancer. And I don't want to do that because of my age, um, but that's what the solution is. So... I would have to recover from that, but I think also that's the physical side of things, but it's also the physical and emotional side of mm. things. That will, I can't put a, a timeline on that, no. Okay. Yeah. Uh, an employer isn't obliged to hold the job open forever. Um, no. Uh, equally, they do have to make allowances for people with cancer legally. Now, if you chose, I'm, I'm going to move, that's the short legal answer. I, I can't say whether you'd win or lose a claim for reasonable adjustments. They have to make adjustments for you, and a lot depends on the prognosis. Uh, they they should be getting evidence from your oncologist and from occupational health. Do you know if they've done that? 
Have they asked for uh, information from your oncologist? Not from the oncologist. They only asked for a sick note when I was signed off for treatment. And um, I had an occupational therapist assess me and evaluate everything. So I did do that. Um, okay. But they haven't asked for anything more. Okay. No. Uh, you probably do have a... a very credible claim here. I don't want to put it any higher than that. A very credible claim if they do dismiss you for poor performance because of failure to make adjustments, failure to allow you lots of extra time uh, while you're yeah. going through medical treatment. A 500 employee company has the resources to, to do that. But here's the big but, Sophia. Okay. There are two things. Number one, even if they're not allowed to dismiss you, they're not obliged to pay you when you're not there. They don't have to give you sick pay once you've exhausted your contractual sick pay. So you could be sitting at home earning nothing. That's point one. Point two is from a practical perspective, and I, I, I say this with love, maybe the best thing to do is to accept the exit package, part on good terms, focus on your recovery for the next few months or years, and then apply for new jobs when you're ready and feeling strong enough to work again. I mean, I imagine you've spent time thinking about that, Sophia. It's, it's not going to come as any new suggestion to you, I'd imagine. No, but the only thing is with the settlement agreement, I mean, uh, they've given me a deadline um, and I felt like there's quite a lot of pressure for me to make a decision. I only went back, you know, a week ago and they've already told me this and they've given me a very tight deadline. So I feel there's quite a lot of pressure on me. To How sort of... tight is the deadline? It's a week. A week, that is tight. Um, I mean, I'm sure if you asked for more, you'd get more. Do you, are you a member of a union, Sophia? No, I'm not. No, no. Okay. Um, I, I'm sure if you asked for more time, you'd get more time. I, I say that because I specialise in employment law and I know how these organisations work. If you say in writing to HR, I need more time to consider it because it's such a big decision, they're not going to say no. Um, okay. But it's it's the legal answer is you might have a claim. I can't be more precise than that without seeing your medical records, without seeing the correspondence, without knowing exactly what the performance issues are. Um, but on a purely practical basis, maybe, just maybe, take the money, run and focus on getting better. Sophia, what I'm going to do um, is I'm I'm going to ask anybody who has some advice for your thoughts on your situation to text in 84850 and I'll read out what other people suggest if you're happy for me to do that. Yeah, that'd be really helpful. Thank right. you. Sophia, thank you. And I, I wish you good health and a very, very speedy recovery.